Dear students, welcome to our lecture on bioinformatics where we continue our con conversation on the importance of bioinformatics and move on now to actually applying some easily accessible and readily available techniques from bioinformatics to make sense of our data. So, um, one of the most confusing data that we get in applied environmental microbiology is that of sequences whether we have genetic sequences, protein sequences or cDNA sequences. Now, if you remember cDNA is complementary DNA, so basically you are getting the sequence for an RNA. So, once you have got the sequence from your sequencer machine or from the sequence provider, the next step is to understand what the sequence is at the very minimum in unalphabetical way. So, in at the very least you should if it is a genetic sequence you should have some file that you can read and it says A, T, G, C and so on and so forth. Now, um, if you have used applied biosystem platform then it might have a particular different extension and you might require certain software to open the file read it and then and align your sequence annotate it. I remember that um, for example, many years ago applied biosystem sequencers would have would give us the output in form of dot ab1 and there is a free um, sequence reader available finch tv and uh, we used to use that finch tv in order to read the sequences. So, once you have read the sequences you can control c that is you can copy the sequence and then now you can proceed uh, online to do some very easy um, alignment of your sequences and get some basic idea of what it might be actually, uh, what actually might be your sample. Now, um, what I am going to show you today in this particular lecture is only relevant when we are dealing with small number of sequences, let us say up to 50 or maybe up to 100, but definitely not 10,000 or 20,000 or 1 lakh, 1 million and so on and so forth. And the reason for that is because these online platforms are not built to to, to entertain such high amount of input. They are built for short um, small number of sequences and when we are talking about higher number of sequences typically we have metagenomic sequences whether they are first, second, third or fourth generation uh, sequencing uh, whether, whether they are from first, second, third or fourth generation sequencing techniques and in this case we have separate platforms and I would in this lecture or in the next lecture I will be talking about one such platform which is easily available and it is very accessible for people who have very little experience with programming and very little experience with Linux based um, software. So, uh, let us start with uh, your let us start with Sanger sequencing. So, for example, if you get Sanger sequencing done for one of your clones and your chief interest is to find out what is your uh, microbe that from which you made this clone. So, in order to find the microbe that is answering the question who is present in my sample, first of all you need to be able to open up the sequencing mesh file and then if it is in FASTA form FASTA, then simple notepad would open it. If it is in fast Q form, again a notepad can open it, but if it is in other forms you might require specialized software as I mentioned earlier. Now, there is a chief difference between fast R file and fast Q file. Fast R file basically is just your sequences. So, A, T, T, G, C, A, so on and so forth would be fast R file. There is a particular format of fast R file and I will be showing you very soon what the format is. Fast Q file for every nucleotide you will have a quality score. So, let us say my sequencer said all right I am reading A here, but then the sequencer is not very confident about whether A is present in this position or not, in that position in the sequence in the genetic element or not. So, in that case the quality score would be low, but if sequencing machine is very clear that yes this is what is present then the quality score would be high. This quality score which always uh, is written below the corresponding nucleotide is very very useful when especially in metagenomics when we tend to generate lot of errors. Uh, Sanger sequencing is produces Sanger sequencing is uh, one of the safe and reliable sequencing techniques because the error rate is very low compared to other rapid and um, high throughput sequencing techniques. So, once you have opened a file and you know it is whether FASTA or FASTQ, you need to convert FASTQ into FASTA in, in, in order to be able to use the online tools because they do not 
account for the quality scores that is for you to do some basic bioinformatics and eliminate the base pairs that you are not very sure about. So, if there is a base pair that has very low score according to you, you can remove it and say gap I do not know what is here. Anyway, so once you have removed the quality scores and you are left with FASTA file, your FASTA file would look something like this. So, now this is a very good example to give you um, how a FASTA file would look if you open it in a notepad. Now, here it starts with this particular sign, the name of your sample follows this. So, you will put this sign and then you will write the name of the sample. In this case, the name of the sample is well A01 G3 plus 8F. Here, 8F is describing the primer used. So, uh, because uh, this is my file data from my uh, graduate work, I know that this is this sequence is of 16 S rRNA gene. So, if you remember what I told you about 16 S rRNA gene, 16 S rRNA gene uh, just to recap is the measure of find is the gold standard for finding out who is present in the sample if it is bacterial sample. And the reason for that is because 16 S rRNA has conserved domains and has hyper variable domains. So, we align the conserved domains in all the 16 S rRNA sequences that we have and we notice how the variable domain is changing. And on basis of the variable domain differences, we can decide whether our sequence is similar to um, uh, something that is known and how similar it is. And in this way, we get an idea whether a sample is closer to bacteria A or bacteria B. 16S rRNA was the first that was um, proposed by Dr. Sanger and it is very successfully used and even now it continues to be a gold standard despite some limitations which I have already taught in other lectures. So, if you are not clear about what 16S rRNA gene is, I highly recommend you go back to previous lectures, skim through them and find out what this gene is, why it is so important. Um, and also with the general assumption that each bacterial cell will have a constant number of 16 S rRNA gene beat 1, beat 2 and we know some microbes that have very high amount of 16 S rRNA genes by the way. Um, but let us say if you assume 1.4 or 4.1 uh, 16 S rRNA gene per microbial cell, then knowing the count of 16 S rRNA gene by via qPCR which is quantitative polymerase chain reaction, it will be easier for us to find out how many microbial cells are present. So, if we do quantification of 16 S rRNA gene, it tells me how many bacteria are present. And obviously, the next question is what if there is a bacteria that does not have 16 S rRNA gene? There is no such bacteria that does not have 16 S rRNA gene, it is universal. That is why it is used for quantifying bacterial populations. Alrighty, so this is how your um, FASTA file would look like. There will be the sign followed by the name of the sample, and 8F here, by the way. 8F here is the name of the primer, 8 forward, it starts from the position 8 in 16 as rRNA gene. And I do remember that this particular sequencing, um, we I supplied to my sequencing uh, agency 8F primer to use that as the starting point of sequencing. That is why they have labeled it 8F, F stands for forward and there is a corresponding reverse primer too, but I wanted it to be by forward. Now, what follows this is a sequence of um, alphabets ATGC and this is actually the sequence of your genetic material. So, once you have opened this file, we can control C this. And then open up blast ncbi nlm dot nih dot gov slash blast dot cgi. An easy way to approach this would be just look up online NCBI blast and here you go. So, now you can choose what kind of blast you want to do, but if you click the first uh, the main title, this is where you will end up. So, this is where we are. Now, let us look at the different options we have here. Here we have uh, web blast which in this all this is web blast, so all this would be done online, but it would be nice idea first to find out what blast is. So, let us find out what BLAST is. BLAST stands for basic local alignment search tool. So, it is a very basic local alignment, local alignment as in it does it locally and it is a search tool because it searches what aligns the best. It finds the regions of local similarities between sequences. So, overall similarity is not necessary, but it will look for local similarities. Okay, here it is similar to this microbe, 
here it is similar to this microbe almost everywhere it is similar to that microbe and that information it will report back to us. The program compares nucleotide or protein sequences now note here BLAST can do both nucleotide comparison and protein comparison to sequence databases and who does it compare it to with sequence databases. So, there are two things happening here one we have the sequences that we have generated from our environmental sample and second we have databases that already have annotated sequences. Annotated means the ones we know where they came from which microbe they are belonging to and we have all the information maybe we have fully sequenced them also. So, now what the BLAST will do is it will do a local alignment for all nucleotides in the same sequence that I have generated through my environmental samples and compare it to all the data as entries in the database and then it will calculate similarity and then rank them in order of increasing similarity to decreasing similarity. So, in the decreasing order it will rank them. BLAST can be used to infer functional and evolutionary relationship between sequences as well as to help identify number of gene families. Now, if you remember we did talk about uh, functional similarities and phylogenetic similarities. So, if the genetic sequence is similar we assume that functional characteristics would be also similar. For example, if there are two microbes and both of them have MRSA gene which is which is responsible for methicillin resistance in Staphylococcus aureus, then we can assume that both the microbes that have MRSA gene are likely to be resistant to methicillin. Now, there is a word likely because lot happens to in on the regulation level, but likely similar uh, resistant to methicillin exposure. So, the, and if we do a blast, if we sequence MRSA genes and we do not know if we are sequencing MRSA genes or we, we just sequence it and then we blast it, we align it and with local, we do local alignment and we find out that the genes that we have separated isolated from the two bacteria are very, very similar to MRSA. In fact, they are so similar we can say comfortably, oh, this is MRSA. Then we can assume, we can infer with quite some uh, probability, quite some backing that the gene that we have isolated confers methicillin resistance to the microbe. So, in this way it gives us information or related to function of the gene, function of the microbe. The other is evolutionary. So, remember I told you in 16S rRNA what we do is we have conserved domains and then we have hyper variables of domains. So, conserved domains are assumed to be almost same for all kind of bacteria, but hyper variable regions change. So, depending on how far the hyper variable regions are from each other, which means how dissimilar they are, we get an idea of how different they are from evolutionary perspective, how, how distant they are. What it implies is that their common ancestor was way long back because the ones that are close cousins will have more genetic similarity than the ones that are genetically that, that are evolutionary very far away. So, it gives us information on both functional and evolutionary perspective. Now, let us look at what options we have here in BLAST. So, we have web BLAST, online BLAST, we have nucleotide BLAST, BLAST X, T BLAST 10 and protein BLAST and it is pretty self uh, evident actually. Nucleotide BLAST is when I take a nucleotide sequence, this is by the way nucleotide sequence and you can look at it very carefully. And you can look at it very carefully that the only alphabet you will find here would be ATGC. So, you know definitely that this is a nucleotide uh, sequence. So, if you want to blast this, if you want to compare this and get data related to nucleotide. So, basically what will happen is that the, the NCBI blast will take your sequence, will take this nucleotide based sequence and then compare it to all the nucleotides in its databases, all the sequences and the nucleotides in the databases and then tell you what it is most similar to. So, let us try this blast N which is the first one. So, this is what it will look like. So, we just need to do control C and my suggestion is let us select all of it. Okay. So, now that we have input our data and look I have still kept the name of the file here and the name of the file has automatically come been input here. I am interested in nucleotide collection, others and are. I am not interested in mouse genomes and tr its transcript. I am not in interested in human genome. I am not interested in anything, but um, let us write uncultured environmental samples. And I can choose that I want to uh, limit, ok, let us remove this because something fun we will see here. I want to limit my sequences from one type of material. I only want matches the from hydrocarbon. 
uh, contaminated soils and then I can choose highly dissimilar, more dissimilar or somewhat dissimilar, somewhat similar um, sequences and then I can just press blast here. There are more algorithmic al parameters that I can uh, change. Now this is the page you will get. So what will happen is that you will be aligned a job title and then you will be given a uh, request ID and then it will let you know in how, uh, how much time has elapsed since you made the request and how much more time you need to know for the next trial. So it will continue doing this. Meanwhile, let us move on to other. This is Blast X. So if you look at Blast X, what it does is it translates a nucleotide sequence. So what right now we had ATGC, but what Blast X will do for us, if we post the same thing here, so we have pasted the same thing here, same sequence exactly, same name. And now if I try to do Blast X for it, not Blast N, what it will do is it will take my nucleotide sequence, look at all the reading frames, the six reading frames possible, convert it into six different proteins and then align the proteins. And then the one that matches the best, it will say, all right, this might be this. Alrighty, so now let us look at what we are interested in and let us blast it. So now we have two blast requests going on. One is this one and one is this one. It might take time uh, uh, around two, three, four, five minutes depending on the traffic. So um, if it is very active in the part of in the globe, if this is the time when people are actively blasting their sequences, it is likely to take longer time. Let us look at what other options we have. We have T blast in. So what T blast in will do if you have a protein sequence. So protein sequence will not look like ATGC. Alphabets are again used to write amino acids name like M, R, T, P, but they are not limited to ATGC, they are much more variable obviously. So when you have a protein sequence, you want to do T blast 10. Uh, and and here is the thing, you want to do T blast 10 when you have a protein sequence and you want to compare it to the nucleotides, not to other proteins. If you want to compare your protein sequences to other proteins, then you do protein blast or here you will read it as blast B already. So we have some data here. Okay, this was blast N when we, where we compared our nucleotide to other nucleotides. So you can do it here. This is blast N suite and this is our, our ID number. This is our query ID. This is the description name. This is the nucleic acid. Our query was 886 base pair long. The database we wanted to use was NR which is nucleotide collection and we did blast N. So let us take a look at it. So look here, color key for alignment score, whenever the alignment is really good, the score is really good, the color would be red and then pink and then green and then blue and then black. So notice here everything is mostly red, there are some gaps, so basically it is saying there are some gaps in the sequences and remember NCBI blast one of the key features is that it allows for gaps. If it would not allow for let us say this initial small gap, then all of these would have suffered, all of these would have been green, green blue or black and the simple reason for it is that when I am not allowing a gap, then I am introducing a frame shift mutation. Alrighty, let us see what it is similar to. So if you scroll down, you will see what it is similar to. So we notice that there are a lot of uncultured bacteria, that is what it is similar to. So this uncultured bacterium partial 16S rRNA gene, so weird right here that because I know that this sequence is from 16S rRNA, uncultured gamma proteobacterium, so on and so forth. What often interests people is find out the first cultured that shows up in the sequencing list. Oh, all uncultured here. Alrighty, so learn that we will we'll go through and we will find out one that is cultured. <laughs> okay, so this is a maximum score, this is a total score, this is query coverage which means at uh, were how many what percentage of base pairs were covered in this alignment process and here it is 100 percent. E value, it is not 0 exactly, it is nearly 0. We want E value to be as low as possible is the possibility of having false error, false positive and this is identity. So my, sim my sequence is 99 percent similar to this particular sequence and the accession ID, ID of this sequence is this. So if I click on this, it will open another page and it will give me more information about the particular bacteria. Now remember, I did not submit this bacteria. I did not submit this uncultured bacterium partial 16S rRNA gene clone CIF 938-N9D416SB. Somebody else did, but now I have information and I, NCBI will allow you to actually upload your uh, document here. So this is Scott, Levin, Swin, Trinch, Berry, Tushan and Curie. 
and the title of the paper their work is leaf cutter ant refused drums are nutrient reservoirs harboring diverse microbial assemb assemblages so we are looking at some particular ant leaf cutter ants refused drums so we are looking at the excretory material of an ant and at the time of submission the paper was not published and it, it, it had been submitted but it was not published already so i get some information that this sequence that i submitted matches the sequence found in ant dump Alrighty, now let us look for one that is um, all of them are uncultured. Alrighty, so I can go and take a look at the other one. And look, if you go scroll below, let us look at the one that matched the best. If you scroll below, NCBI has left a gap here. So, wherever NCBI has gap, left a gap, you can take a look and notice here that this is a really good match. Alrighty, but here is a problem with this. I still do not know what bacteria it is most similar to. So, in that case, what I can do is I can download the entire analysis and I can find out where is the first cultured bacteria and what it is. So, uncultured bacteria, I do not know. It could be an actinobacteria, it could be an acinetobacteria, it could be a clostridia, I have no idea could be a proteobacteria. So, in order to know that we need to download the whole file and then you will find out what it is because it will have all the information already. And then uh, what we can do is if you submit multiple files you can create distance tree of results. Um, so, let us try that. So, let us edit and resubmit. Okay. So, this is one file that I have and let us see if we have other files too. This is another file we have. So, let us copy paste this here in this file. There, now we have two samples. So, now we can Okay, so now we have two samples here. Yes, so let us try uh, blasting this. So, here I do not want to have uncultured environmental samples. Last time, remember the entire list was full of uncultured. So, let us say I do not want uncultured, I want to see the cultured ones so that I have some information that I can share. And then let us blast it. Okay, let us see, let us move on and see what is okay. This will take time, so let us move on and see what happened to our protein. So, we took the same sequence, we converted it into protein, we translated it into protein in silico and then let us see what our alignment is. Our alignment is really poor. Remember in the previous one, there were very few gaps, all of it was red which means very good alignment, but here alignment score is low, sometimes it is very low and there are multiple gaps. So, this is not reliable. So, often where what we do is we take our nucleotide sequence, we like to translate it and then blast it with protein database. But at times that might lose the information. So, if you look here, we have we are uh, again lot of hypothetical proteins. But look at the then there is also say homo sapien analogy. So, there is lot of confusion here, this does not make sense. I do not see a 16 SRRN in this. So, notice this is one limitation of your blast P. So, you have to be careful what do you want to do blast X or blast N or blast P. Um, Alright, this is still working I guess. Yes. Okay, so, let us select this control A. Space control V. There. Okay, so, let us try to do blast X. Okay, this is Blastex now with two samples. So, you can I have put with 30 samples at a time. So, I just copy paste the whole notepad file. So, what if I want to look at the first sample which I have already seen, then I just need to say select first sample from here. If I am interested in second, I just need to select second sample from here and it will and it will give me the similarity list. So, here is a similarity. Notice it has more gaps. Now, the another reason why it might have more gaps is because we said we do not want environmental samples or uncultured samples. We want samples whose information we have very clearly because 
uncultured samples are not very informative. So, let us see when we blasted this with known samples, we saw more gaps now. So, let us see what is the first one that a bacterium LN 5014 114 16 S RRNA gene. Alrighty. So, this is the best match to and what percentage it is? Let us look at the percentage. It matches nearly, it, it covers 100 percent of the query of the entire sequence and 89 percent is your similarity identity. So, this is very helpful information. Let us look at its accession number, what kind of um, bacteria this is, bacterium LN. Alrighty, so bacterium LN 5114 16 is Okay, this is very good news. It matches 16 as ribosomal RNA gene because that is what I actually uh, amplified. It is a bacteria among which it is proteobacteria, it is a gamma proteobacteria. These are the authors, this is the title and they have published the paper already. So, I can actually go to the paper and read what the research was all about. Wonderful. Okay, so now let us go to the second one. So, in order to go to second one, I just need to choose the second one here and hold a breath. Alrighty, so uh, this one has 882 uh, base pairs, I think the other one had 886 something and lot of gaps. So, let us see what is the first cultured bacteria that matches it. Wow, bacterium LN 529016 is RRNA gene partial sequence. Wow, same study, similar study. Okay, this is what you have. So, you can look at where the gaps are present, where the gaps are not. There are lot of gaps here. And then other thing we can do is the similarity is 89 percent comparable, but the coverage is 96 percent. So, 4 percent of this of the sequence was not even covered and we can take a look at the bacterium LN that matches perfectly with it. Okay, same paper and this is not a gamma proteobacteria, this is a gematimonaditis, perfect. So, this is how you use BLAST X and this is also how you use BLAST N. Now, let us look at uh, this is BLAST X by the way. So, we have same and let us do BLAST X. And the reason is remember when we did BLAST X for the first sequence, they were not very good matches. So, we do not expect very good matches here, especially with 16 is RRNA gene, it is not wise to expect lot of good matches. But I want to show before we turn off, I want to show you one particular example where with um, nucleotide data that we have, it was better to use, it, better to translate it into protein and then uh, BLAST it than not and we will see why. Alrighty, now let us come back here to BLAST. So, we have BLAST X, T BLAST M and we have BLAST P. So, if you have protein sequence, you want to BLAST it to other proteins, you use BLAST P. If you have protein sequence and you want to BLAST it to other nucleotides, you use this. Let us see what other facilities NCBI has given us. This is beautiful. NCBI has given us standalone and API BLAST, which basically means you do not have to rely to in on internet. You can download their database, you can download their commands and then do it in house in your computer. So, you do not need a connection to internet and you do not have to share the information. This is really nice. What else you can do if you are interested in programming, you can actually contribute to making BLAST and you can also use BLAST in Google Cloud. Alrighty, so now let us look at some specialized searches of BLAST. What there is a particular option called smart BLAST that will allow you to find proteins very similar to your query. There is a primer BLAST, this is very important, I have used this before. What it does is if I give it my amplic consequences, it will help me design the primer. Now, primer design is not very easy, we just do not take the ends of a uh, an amplicon and then say the complementary of this would be a primer design. In fact, they have to be the right, uh, the GC content has to be the right and we have to avoid that, uh, avoid any possibility that they will stick with each other. So, they will make dimers or they will uh, collapse into themselves and then uh, disrupt all the PCR and downstream products you are interested in. So, primer blast will help you with all that. Then we have global align which will compare two sequences across their entire span. So, not just part of 16S RRNA with part of 16S RRNA, but the entire span. Then we have CD search which will actually find conserved domains in your searches. This is very, very important because once you know conserved domains, once you are not worried about specificity, then you can design your own primers and you can design your own sensors. Next in geo technology, we have geo which is which finds matches to gene expression profiles and then IG blast, it searches immunoglobin and T cell receptor sequences. We have X screen that looks for vector contamination. We have C dot 
which find sequences with similar conserved domain architecture. We have mole blasts which establishes taxonomy for uncultured or environmental sequences which is very important for us environmental engineers. Then it has bioassay which searches protein or nucleotide targets in PubChem bioassay, this is copyright bioassay. Then we have multiple alignment, what it can do is it can align sequences using domain and protein constraints. And then we have targeted loci, I am only interested in a particular kind of analysis. For example, if I have a 16S rRNA gene sequence, I know it is 16S rRNA nothing else, I can ask NCBI, okay only do 16S rRNA blasting, we save my time. Okay. Here we are and this is your um, blast x and look the similarity index is very low and the hypothetical protein is lactobacillus jensenii. percentage similarity is 61 percent which is very low. So, we do not want to be very sure of this blast x does not seem to be working for this. What you can also do is We can go and use tools such as XPASI that will allow you so this is my FASTA sequence. Now XPASI should ideally allow me to convert my uh, FASTA sequences into protein sequence. Now this is my protein sequence in 6 different frames 5 prime to 3 prime frame 1 frame 2 frame 3 and then 3 prime to 5 prime 5 frame 1 frame 2 frame 3 perfect. And then you see it has noted all the stop codons. I only see stop codons, not start codons, which is very interesting. And um, okay, so now I can what I can do is I can blast all these proteins. So I can copy all this and then I can put it in my uh, here in protein blast, and then I can get my data. I can get, but because we already have a nucleotide, we can just use blast X. It will automatically translate it into protein for us, and we don't have to worry. All right, dear students, this is all for today. We learned about NCBI BLAST, which is a very, very essential and very, very important tool for anybody doing environmental microbiology, even remotely. Thank you very much. In the next class, we will look at what tools are available to us if we have metagenomic data, which is high throughput sequencing data. Thank you.